Hello everyone and welcome back to our discussion on the contemporary world. Now, previously we've already discussed the relationship between uh, the economy and globalization, uh, politics and globalization, as well as religion and globalization. So for our discussion today, uh, we will be discussing the relationship between media and globalization. So as we all know, no, globalization entails the spread of various cultures. So when I salida ng gamon dito sa Hollywood, no, dili lang na siya i-premiere or ipagawas or ipasalida at to dito sa United States, no. Uh, ipasalida po na siya sa different cities uh, across the world including ours. Okay? And similarly po, uh, kanang pagsikat sa mga K-pop or Korean pop songs, no, parehaan ng BTS, Blackpink, uh, ni Lisa, uh, no? So, kana siya, miskan kita, wala ta kasabot tukon sa lyrics ng mga kantaha, pero kita, uh, naminaw regya punta, and some people also idolize these K-pop stars, no? So again, that's an example of the spread of various cultures by globalization. And similarly, globalization also spreads ideas. No? Kanang uh, mga lesbians, gays, mga transgender, mga bisexual, no? Kanang ilahang communities, uh, it is already spreading across the world and becoming more widely accepted. Similarly, pod, uh, kanang napoy mga conservative na mga simbahan nga mu oppose pod aning uh, rights aning LGBTQ, no? And kani sila, they are also moving from places to places like uh, from South America to Korea and to Burundi in Africa. Now, people who travel the globe teaching and preaching their beliefs in universities, churches, uh, mga public forums, mga classrooms, or even as guests of a family, they play a major role in the spread of uh, culture and ideas. Pero today, no, ang ato ang kalagmitan mga uh, makaspread na ng culture of ideas is kanang mga televisions, uh, mga social media groups, uh, even movies, books, magazines, no? Uh, they have made it easier for advocates to reach larger audiences. So, globalization relies on media as its main conduit for the spread of global culture and ideas. So Jack Lull was then right to ask, could global trade have evolved without a flow of information on markets, prices, commodities, and more? So could empires have stretched across the world without communication or with, throughout their borders? And could religion, music, poetry, film, fiction, uh, cuisine, and fashion develop as they have without the intermingling of media and cultures? No? So, there is an intimate relationship between globalization and media, which must be unraveled to further understand our contemporary world. So, para mas makasabota unsa ning uh, media o no, o unsa yung mga functions, ato sa ang unang i-defining media. So, according to Jack Lull, no, kanang media is a means of conveying something such as a channel of communication. Now, technically speaking, no, a person's voice is a medium. So, when commentators refer to media, uh, the plural of medium, no, they mean the technologies of mass communication. So, kaning mga technologies like the print media, which will include books, magazines, uh, newspapers, no, uh, broadcast media, which will uh, involve radio, film, and television, and finally, digital media. Digital media will cover the internet and mobile mass communication. So, within the category of the internet media, now, there are the email, internet sites, social media, and internet-based uh, video and audio. So, so, while it is relatively easy to, de uh, to define media, no, it is more difficult or more complex to determine what media does and how they affect societies. No? So, can you see, uh, siya si Marshall McLuhan. He is a Canadian philosopher as well as a media theorist. Now, he once declared that the medium is the message. 
Now, he did not mean that ideas are useless and do not affect people. His statement was an attempt to draw uh, attention to how media as a form of technology reshape societies. No, so, therefore, the television is not a simple bearer of messages. It also shapes the social behavior of users and reorient family behavior. No, pasabot na, no, mausub ang uh, batasan sa pamilya. For example, katong sa unang panahon, ang kanang mga pamilya, kung uh, manihapon sila, magdungan ko na sila kaon, magstoryahanay, mag-exchange sa ilahang how their day went, no? Uh, at the dinner table. Pero, there are some families, no, I'm sure there are still families that do that, pero na po yung mga pamilya nga, adili na maging unana. So, kada tong pag uh, introduce aning television sa 1960s, no, na po yung mga pamilya nga, di na mga on dito sa misa, ato na dito sa ilahang living room, dito na sa TV, maglantaw na ugun sa ilang paboritong uh, sports, or teleserye, or game show, or unsa ba, no, uh, dito na na sila maglantaw and dito na na sila magstoryahanay, you know? Muna na mag maglantaw, magkaon, di ba? So, kaning television po, no? It has also uh, drawn people away from other uh, more or less meaning meaningful activities, no? Uh, kaning mga tao, uh, nani mga tao nga dili magdula sa gawas, magsigil na naglantaw sa lida or nana, no? Nya yeah, nana po uh, ni decline na po ang pagbasa sa mga libro. No? Pero again, depende rin yapon po na sa tao. So today, uh, nanapuntay ato ang mga smartphone no? which allows us to communicate and to uh, get in touch with multiple people at the same time. No? Kita mismo, gagamit na, tanawa atong GC or atong group chat, no? message sa osa, magkita sa tanan. No? So we should also consider the effect of kaning uh, social media or the internet uh, with relationships. Diba? Uh, sa unang panahon, uh, kaning mga managtiayon, walay pamaagi parang magsigi o kontakanay. No? So, di sila magka up to date or updated kung unsay status sigi sa ilahang pares. No? And also, po, sa karun, uh, ibutang na to, I'm pretty sure many of you have heard stories nga pila nakabog-gabulag tungod sa Facebook or more or less in anana, di ba? So, the technology or the medium and not the message makes for this social change uh, possible, di ba? So, kanay Makluhan also added that different media simultaneously extend and amputate human senses. No? New media may expand the reach of communication, but they also dull the user's communicative capacities. Now, if you think about the medium of writing, di ba? Uh, sa una, people would write things down on parchment. They would uh, exchange their stories mainly uh, kanang orally lang, mag -isa, agi, pamaagi lang o pag-istorya, di ba? So, to be able to pass uh, stories verbally from one person to another, storytellers had to have very retentive memories. Dapat maayo sila og memorya. ba? Kaya madili maayo, nanay mauso ba ng istorya ha? So, however, kaning papyrus, it started becoming more common in Egypt. So, after the 4th century BCE, which increasingly meant that more people could write down their stories, as a result, storytellers no longer had to rely completely on their memories. Now, this development, according to some philosophers at the time, dulled the people's capacity to remember. No? So, imagine that, no, simply, regani na siya nga kuan from um, ang widespread, uh, from the widespread use of oral storytelling, no? Pag na readily available na ng papyrus writing, na, according to philosophers, na nabanga na kuno ang memorya aning mga tao sa una. So, nabutang na to, how much more, uh, especially karon nga, we are reliant on the communications or the instant communications of the social media, di ba? Or the internet. 
So, something similar can be said about our cell phones. So, on the one hand, they expand people's senses. And because they provide the cap capability to talk to more people instantaneously and simultaneously. Pero on the other hand, uh, they also limit senses because they make users easily distractable. Dali rang ma-distract. No? And more prone to multitasking. Although this is not necessarily a bad thing, no, it is merely a uh, change with a trade-off. Okay? So the question of what new media enhance and what they amputate was not a moral or ethic one. Now, according to McLuhan, new media are neither inherently good nor bad. So the famous writer was merely drawing attention to the historically and technologically specific attributes of various media. So basically, to sum it all up, no, um, butang na to, uh, sa inherent good that the media provides today, uh, it's more on the economic function. Uh, it has a sentry function, record keeping function, a social function, entertainment function, a marketplace function, agenda setting function, and a political function. So now we discuss the global village and cultural imperialism. So Kanesi McLuhan used his analysis of technology to determine the impact of electronic media. Now, since he was writing around the 1960s, no, he mainly analyzed the social changes brought about by television. So, McLuhan declared that television was turning the world into a global village. So, ang pasabot niya ane, no? Uh, more and more people sat down in front of their television sets and listened to the same stories. So, their perception of the world would contract or mugamay. So, ang iyan ang i-relate ni Manusia, no? If katong mga tribal villages, no, sa una, no? Uh, Ado man na sila katong mga tribo-tribo pa. Ado na sila ilang uh, kalayo, no? Katong silang kalayo. Dito na sila maglingkod, magtapok. O niya, diha po sila mag uh, storytelling. Di ba? Ilang collective stories. So, the members of the new global village would sit in front of bright boxes in their living rooms. So, in the years after no, McLuhan, media scholars further grappled with the challenges of global media culture. So, a lot of these early thinkers assumed that global media had uh, the tendency to homogenize culture or to make culture uniform. Now, they argued that as a global media, uh, as global media spread, people from all over the world would begin to watch, listen to, and read the same things. So, this thinking arose uh, mostly at the time nga katong power sa Amerika, no, had ter turned into uh, the world's cultural heavyweight. So, kaning mga commentators, therefore, uh, they believe that media globalization coupled with American hegemony uh, would create a form of cultural imperialism. So, ang pasabot nila na silang aning cultural imperialism, aning mostly influenced by America, no? is that kailang mga values o culture sa America may mo overwhelm all the others, no? Tungod aning pag-spread sa uh, cultures agi sa media. Now, in 1976, no, na media critic na si uh, Herbert Schiller, no, muni siya, si Herbert Schiller, he argued that not only was the world being Americanized, but that this process also led to the spread of uh, American capitalist values, uh, kanang mga values like uh, consumerism. No? So, similarly, uh, John Tomlinson, so according to that Sir John, uh, John Tomlinson, rather, now, for John Tomlinson, cultural globalization is simply a euphemism for Western cultural imperialism. 
since it promotes homogenized Western consumer culture. So these scholars, no, uh, who decry cultural imperialism, no, however, have a top-down view of media, since they are more concerned with the broad structure that determine media, or the determine the media content. No, moreover, no, ilang lang focus mongodani was more on uh, kanang America, which has led them to neglect other uh, global flows of information that the media can enable. So this media slash cultural imperialism theory has therefore been uh, subject to significant critique. No? Gaayo po ni Og, question. More or less, lagi uh, sa ato ang, uh, sa ato pa, or sa binisaya pa, kaning ilahang, uh, ilahang tulo ka view, no? kaning ka um, Makluhan, ka Schiller, o kaning ka Tomlinson, no? Ang ilang mong gong more or less focus is on American media, no? And how it would spread uh, kanang consumerism or capitalist consumerism to the rest of the world, no? So, muna siyang daghan po ni kritik aning ilahang uh, point of view of kanang cultural imperialism. So, ato ta sa kritik aning uh, cultural imperialism, no? So, kaning mga kapalaganap, aning idea nga cultural imperialism, no? Uh, ilang gi-ignore mangunang fact nga kanang uh, media, mga messages sa media, o mga content sa media, no? Dili lang kay gigama na sa mga, are not only made by the producers, but they are also consumed by the audiences, no? So, atong mga 1980s, kanang media scholars, they began to pay attention uh, about uh, to the ways in which audiences understood and interpreted media messages. So, the field of audience studies emphasizes that media consumers are active participants in the meaning-making process. No? Kaning mga active participants, they view the media content through their own cultural lenses. So, dili lang kay ilang gidawat o unsay gihungit sa media nila, nila pong gi-relate sa ilahang culture, no? Kung unsay ilang nakita or og nadungog. Now, in 1985, no? Indonesian cultural critic uh, Ian Ang na studied the ways in which different viewers in the Netherlands experienced watching the soap opera or the American soap opera Dallas, no? Sa pamaagi o sulat as a means of or letters as a means of communication with 42 viewers, uh, she presented a detailed analysis of audience viewing experiences. So rather than simply uh, receiving American culture in a passive and resigned way, she noted that the viewers put a lot of emotional energy into the process and they experienced pleasure-based on how the program resonated with them. Now, so, uh, based on this alone, no, uh, you can see nga lahi-lahi good ang point of view po sa mga tao o kung saan nila pag-perceive and receive ng mga media from other nations. No? Uh, another example for that, ibutang na to, uh, during this time, no, ang mga Russians po who watched uh, this soap opera Dallas, kani sila, they were very uh, suspicious uh, because it was an American soap opera. So, ilang pagtuo, no, na po ni siya insert nga American propaganda. Now, take note nga, anang mga 1990, anong panahon na, it's either uh, mopay pagkahulagba sa Soviet Union or uh, still in place pa ang Soviet Union. No? So, komunista pa sila. So, sila, very suspicious sila anang uh, kaning nga soap opera kaila pagtuo ye eh, suksukan og propaganda so even po sa dili lang sa Russia no miskag pog sa mga Amerikano okay so katong mga Amerikano nga galantaw pod aning Dallas no dili on pod tanang Amerikano nga galantaw ani kay makarelate ani nila kay ang ilang panglantaw kaning salidahan no is kabahin ni siya sa kinabuhi sa mga Amerikano nga kwartahan so with that no makakuan ka nga again uh, different i ilagong i-interject ang unsay ilang ma-relate aning 
Ngayon, aning mga medium nga ilang makita. So, apart from the challenges of audience studies, the cultural imperialism thesis has been bellied by the renewed strength of regional trends in the globalization process. Now, kanang Asian culture, no, for example, no, nilaganap na po na siya worldwide sa pamaagi sa uh, process of globalization of media. No, so, nisikat na dili lang, uh, butang na to, ubang mga culture sa Asia, o parehaan ng mga manga or mga anime, di ba? So, nikalat na po na siya. And they are now an indelible part of global pop culture or popular culture. So, the same can be said for kanang Korean pop or K-pop, di ba? Kanang mga uh, Korean telenovelas or parehaan ng Lalisa no? or Blackpink, no? Uh, they are widely successful regionally and globally. Now, kaning observation po, this does not, uh, this also applies to kanang sa mga culinary tastes. Now, so the obvious case of globalized Asian cuisine is ang paglaganap anang sushi og ramen. Di ba? Kita na na po tayo, ichirako dere or unsa pa ba inyo hang uh, preferred ramen nga tindahan. So while it is true uh, kanang McDonald's has continued to spread across Asia, it is also the case that Asian brands have provided stiff competition. No pareha sa Jollibee, no, ang Pilipinas nga Jollibee, uh, so they claim nga sila pod ang number one choice for fast food in Brunei. So given these patterns, no, it's no longer uh, tenable to insist that globalization is a unidirectional process of foreign cultures, overwhelming local ones. So as I mentioned, no, atong dito sa lesson one, kaning globalization, it will always be an uneven process. Onya dili good siya patas, di ba? Pero it will always leave room for dynamism and cultural change. So, this is not a contradiction, ha? It is merely a testament to unsa kakutining phenomenon sa globalization. So, now we discuss social media and the creation of cyber ghettos. So, by now, very few of the media scholars will argue that the world is becoming culturally homogeneous. Now, apart from the nature of diverse audiences and regional trends in cultural production, now the internet and social media are proving that globalization of culture and ideas can move in different directions. So while Western culture remains powerful and media production still controlled by a handful of powerful Western corporations, the internet, particularly social media, is challenging previous ideas about media and globalization. So as with all new media, no, kaning social media, it has uh, beneficial and negative aspects as well. No? So on the one hand, these forms of communication have democratized access. No? Anyone who has a smartphone or can have internet access, no, pwede nang makagamit o Twitter o Facebook, no? makapost na na sila dito free of charge. Diba? And these media have also enabled users to become consumers and producers simultaneously. Diba? So, the most pot uh, the democratic potential of social media was most evident during the uh, uprisings known as Arab Spring in 2011 although gasugod ni siya atong 2010s no kani siya kay kaning mga lugar mga na mga authoritarian mga ni sila like Tunisia, Egypt, Libya no so sila uh, during this time wa man sila access to traditional broadcast media kay ang media nila di aning mga lugar basically is state sponsored Okay, so ang mga uh, ang gobyerno ay gabot kung unsa ilang ipasalida. Okay? So, kaning mga authoritarian regimes in Tunisia, Egypt, and Libya, no? 
ang mga tao gagamit sila og Twitter para mo organize sa ilang kaugalingon o maka uh, palaganap og information kung asa sila magrally, asa sila magmeeting, asa sila magprotesta and all that, no? So again mo na siya usa ka positive sa uh, social media nga maka-organize mo gingon ana quickly. Pero kanang ingon ana nga organization, no? Uh, you can uh, organize protests and rallies no at the same time kanay mga bulyagon pod pwede pud ni maka organize og riot no or mga pagubot no so depending on how you use it yun, no or how you use social media or depending on the minds using so- social media no uh, it the effects can be both positive and negative so kanay social media na na ni siya eh? dark side yeah, for example, in uh, the early 2000s, commentators began referring to the emergence of a splinter net no, and the phenomenon of cyber balkanization to refer to the various bubbles uh, people place themselves in when they are online. So in the United States, voters of the Democratic Party largely read liberal websites. No? Uh, and also, they watch kana mga mainstream media websites uh, for the mainstream media websites, butang nato like CNN, MSNBC, no. And the voters of the Republican Party largely read conservative websites and watch mga conservative news networks like Fox News, no. Kani nga segmentation notes an article uh, in the journal Science uh, has been exacerbated by the nature of social media feeds. No, nagkagrabe sila tungod ani mga feeds sa social media which lead users to read articles, memes and videos shared by uh, like-minded friends. So as such being on Facebook can resemble a living in an echo chamber which reinforces one's existing beliefs and opinions. So this echo chamber pre- uh, precludes users from listening to or reading opinions and information that challenge their viewpoints, thus making them more partisan and close-minded. So, usa ka good example aning dark side no sa social media no is ang kanang paglagana po daning uh, Russian collusion. Uh, basically, uh, karon gi consider na siya as a hoax or conspiracy or uh, you know kanang na pruebahan nila nga dili tinuod okay so if you're not aware of this atong 2016 uh, just a few days after ni lingkod si Trump for president ay ni gawas nga dossier nga niingon nga uh, si Trump kuno ga collude with Russia no si Putin kuno na kuno yung mga uh, hackers nga gipakuan manipulate sa election no and kaning paglaganap ani uh, it's not only with social media it's with the mainstream media as well no ang nakakuyaw pud ani kay uh, butang nato no wala pa gani proof ani nga tinuod no uh, butang nato dapat unta ang hustisya is innocent until proven guilty pero ang ipalaganap na sa mainstream media o sa social media kay tinuod god nga ay collusion na nagani mga libro nga na uh, gipublish nga ga include na nga tinuod gyud nga nay collusion no pero when in actuality no wala gay collusion nga nahitabo okay uh, according to the new york post no the hillary clinton campaign hired a bunch of shady operatives to put together a collection of lies and innuendo about donald trump and shop it to the fbi so it was the ultimate political dirty trick one of that was aided and abetted by the media long after Trump Trump uh, took office. So ang kani konong ang tao uh, basically no four years na niagi pero wala pa arrest nga wala pa gidakop si Donald Trump for his so-called collusion. Ang nadakpan na noon ang kaning si Igor Danchenko. Kani siya mo ni siya ang supposedly nga gagather sa tanan nga information kuno hay nga gibutang sa dossier no and of course he was accused of lying at least 5 times to investigators so kana siya muna na siya ron 
Now that uh, Russia collusion is proven a lie, when do the trials begin for treason? So, so inana po na siya, usap po na siya sa uh, mga negative aspects, not only sa social media, ha? pati po kanang, um, uh, kanang, as we mentioned earlier, no? kanang na ay uh, cyber ghetto, di ba? So, inana po na siya sa cyber ghetto, no? Ang tanang mga tao butang nato sa far left or sa left, so for example, ang media sa sa left or sa Democrats pareha sa CNN, MSNBC, no? Ilang gipush gyud ang theory nga tinuod gyud nga ay collusion. Again, ang report sa right, ila pong gipush gyud nga walay collusion na hitabo. Well, based on the facts, sakto ang right and the on this, no? Well, until further notice, no, we will stand corrected on that. Pero I will give you another example on the negative aspects of social media. So aside atong Russia collusion hoax, no, and I, there's oh, another example that I'd like to share with you, no. Uh, for example, kaning a tweet, no. Uh, if you can read it, no, this was a tweet by uh, the activist Sean King, who is an activist for Black Lives Matter and Black Lives in general. Now, according to his tweet, no, uh, this woman, Sherita Dixon Cole, was kidnapped and raped by a Texas state trooper. Now, uh, according to him as well, she is being held hostage in Ellis County Jail. Now, it happened in 2018 or 17. No, I can't really remember when. But basically, um, to sum up the story of this one is, can I say, uh, Miss call kay gi punong ni siya for a traffic stop by Texas State Trooper kay they noticed something off with her driving so upon conducting the traffic stop no uh, the state trooper noticed that she had uh, empty bottles of alcohol in her vehicle and they have a law against that no and they have a law against i think it's a kita po na po tay balaod against kan driving under the influence diba so, gi dakop siya, gi book siya dito sa Ellis County Jail, no? And while she was in jail, uh, ni gawas ning istorya ha, gi tweet ni siya ni Sean King. Now, the problem with Sean King's statement is that none of it is true. No? Uh, this was quickly proven by the body camera worn by the Texas State Trooper. So again, dito sa Amerika, na na sila yung mga body camera ang ilang police para makita uh, kung unsa go ilang gibuhat. But kung gabuhat tugod sila uh, with everything, um, with due process and according to their policy. So nakita dito sa sa body camera sa video, no? Nga uh, wala go gibuhat nga sa opening officer. He conducted himself uh, according to the law and he uh, did everything uh, by the book or by policy. And even if you look at news sources, no, can you see uh, civil rights attorney Merit Law? No? Can you see po, ni acknowledge po ni siya, kita po siya sa video, ni acknowledge po siya nga, the officer did nothing wrong. So, karan si Sean King, gi, uh, birahan na po siya sa koan mga bala, uh, balita. Uh, I think this is an article from Fox News that stated Sean King slammed for pushing woman's now discredited claim uh, that the trooper sexually assaulted her. Now, ang mahitabo when uh, there is a bubble, no? Ang mindset becomes very narrow, no? So, ang mindset atong mga people nga naaaning under this bubble, no? Anhina na sila mutapot sa story nga kaning bayhana gi uh, kidnap ko siya aning mga police, no? Diya na na sila mutapot. They will not bother to check nga the facts nga wala good ay nahitabo na. No? Uh, di na na sila mo bother o uh, correct sa ilahang ka o galingon. No? Muna na sila ay murag inana na nga mentality which is uh, another thing nga uh, nigawas tungod po aning social media. So, kita, no? Uh, we are consumers as well as producers aning social media pod. So we have to be very careful 
when it comes to uh, taking in information, no? To prevent things like this from happening, no? Uh, kani, I mean, og wala to'y body camera tong police ato, no? So, lagmit, siya po'y ipapreso, din siya po'y i- uh, siya po'y madaot atong istorya, ha? Kung wala siya body camera ato, no? Kay, kani yun, ano yung nakalat naman yung istorya, ha, ni? No? Uh, again, according to uh, we discussed this previously, no, katong gasolat sa democracy in America, no, uh, Alexis de Tocqueville, no, kuya po kay ng America kay ma under na sila, dili na sila ma under sa uh, rule of law ng politicians, ma under na sila of the rule of public opinion, no. So kita again, we have to be very careful when it comes to disseminating information and receiving information as well. We have to check our facts, not only with the sources that we are comfortable with, but with the sources nga uh, we are not comfortable with as well. And we have to uh, compare the information nga gipalagana. Kung kulang ba, ng tao na to, kung unsay tinood yun, di ba? So, with that, no, we will end our discussion. <laughs> So basically, you know, uh, this lesson showed that uh, different media has uh, diverse effects on the globalization process. No? So consumers and users of the media will have a hard time turning back the clock. Though people may individually try to keep out of Facebook or Twitter, for example, this media will continue to engender social change. So instead of fearing these changes no, or entering a state of moral panic, Everyone must collectively discover ways of dealing with them responsibly and ethically. So again, um, one of the ways you can do this is basically just check your facts, no? not just on preferred sources, but also uh, multiple sources as well. So again, uh, with that, we will end our discussion. No? Uh, so thank you for being part of this discussion. Thank you for watching the video. So I will see you on our next discussion. Bye.